Hello, thanks for joining again. This is Honeybee Energy video number two. And there's nothing else to say rather than let's jump right in. As you can remember, we used this um, Rhino model, a very simple Rhino model with solids and some windows to create our basic Honeybee model. And we did that already in the Radiance video series, but I thought it would be good to do that again, just because repetition, you know, this burns into your brain on how it works. That's uh, really good. And then also what we did here, we separated each of these rooms to create um, room f uh, rooms from solids for each of the different rooms. So we have the kitchen storage, bedrooms and so on. This is the ground level. This is the the core, the, the staircase, uh, the core and the hallway. And then this is the second, uh, the, the first floor. And then we have some windows as well. And we did, we, we separate these into all these different uh, rooms to be able to give them all different properties later on. For example, uh, light schedules or, or heating schedules, um, rooms with air condition, rooms without air condition. So we can make a very, very detailed analysis of our energy consumption. Then we, we combined everything, solved it with the, with the adjacency tool. And then we, we add the surfaces, the windows, these very simple windows at the moment. We will also add stuff here, of course, properties and, and things. And then we created our Honeybee model. And here, um, this, these, these two things are just uh, on how to visualize. There are different ways to visualize. This is just a wireframe. This is based, this is our model at the moment without the ground floor, without the ground, the exterior uh, site. And then as you can remember, we did a very quick study just to make it more interesting in the first video. Um, we used the E plus annual loads. This is a very quick uh, simulation and it has its problems obviously because it doesn't actually use the model. That's already a bit strange. So that was strange. And then we used the Honeybee model to OSM, the Open Studio model. So this tool creates the Open Studio model, which is written to your computer. And uh, here it has, some, has an output where you can look at the model in different formats. And here comes the first shout out because um, Mr. Assis Arch, I guess stands for architecture, uh, gave us a very valuable insight about how to use what's the difference between um, the open studio model and energy plus and he he said here hi i just want to suggest um that you should use the open studio component instead of the energy plus in os compo in the os component you can simulate varied air conditioning systems which can throw an error if used in uh, with the e plus directly he also mentioned that i should explain that the um, that the open studio model can be also looked at in the open studio app and you can even modify the model inside so in other words all these data we create here and of course we haven't yet used any schedules and properties and constructions and loads and, and uh, air conditioned systems but all this data will be goes into the honeybee model and then will be translated to an open studio model and that is the seems like it's the core component and thanks a lot Aziz for giving us this uh, insight so that that makes total sense and yes I should explain that I added a panel here to the output OSM this is the model and there are other outputs and last time we looked at the HTML file which just give us a which gave us the model in the, in a very simple report form but you can also look at the model directly in the app. Um, I opened the app already and I opened the model and it's at the moment it's very simple. There's no climate zone. There's uh, no construct. There's only the, the generic construction set. There are no um, schedules. Can I actually look at the 3D? I didn't know that. It's pretty cool. But yeah, at the moment, but yeah, you can look into this and you can see, ah, okay, we have all here bathroom first floor bathroom ground level and so on hallway it's all here and uh but yeah you see it's all generic office program or office program but yeah that's how you can use your how you can also look at at your at your model now you 
probably want to ask me where you can find the Open Studio app. The Open Studio app is within your um, Open Studio application installation folder, which normally is in the C drive. And you can go to the bin folder here, and there is the Open Studio app. That's how you can open it. Or if you installed everything correctly, or like me at least, then you can also just here right click to the output and uh, copy the data only and then open it directly in a new explorer so if you go here and uh, just open this it opens a new instant of the op uh, of the open studio app and the model again and you can change the model in here this now is a separate model of what we created here in rhino so now what <laughs> now what what what, what? I mean, this is cool that we can, of course, look uh, at our model in in the app, but we, of course, want to also see things here in the in Rhino. So I was I thought before we jump in all these like basic properties, construction schedules, loads, and and so on, I want to actually create an output so we can look and whenever we add or change something, then we see the diff what, what happens with the model. That that's what I would like to do. Uh, we do that by so first of all we just remove this because we don't don't need that it seems like that oh that was wrong oh yeah we need the weather data sorry let's let's work with this this is what we need the relays so we have our rooms and this here is our honeybee model group this together so later it's easy to organize and then here we create our open studio model. So here we can actually look at the result. So this already runs, simulates things. So this calculates all kinds of things uh, with the generic um, data we already have in our model. So we can actually look at result as well here in Rhino. And we can, for example, I would say, let's go for the I mean, the, mo the most interesting at the moment is the honeybee read room energy result. So let's put this here and we can use the SQL, uh, SQL output and all it already gives me a, already gives me an error. Okay, now it works. Um, I just had to rerun the simulation. It seems like I didn't complete the, sim the, the calculation. So that's why I had to rerun this. So if if you end up with this being red, then just rerun and it should work. And now we have several options on how to look at these outputs here. So this gives us basically based on the generic um, data we have in our model, it gives us already an output about cooling, heating, lighting, and so on. So this tool co is called read room energy result. It reads the room energy result from, the, from our model, which is stored on your, in the folder. And now we need to read, we need to um, create the balance. And there's this tool here, uh, Honeybee Thermal Load Balance. So that's one way to look at things. Here again, we need our, our Honeybee model. We can use this here. Of course, there's nothing really coming out. And now we can just connect these. We can connect here. Okay, cooling, heating, lighting, electric equipment. There is actually in some of these, uh, of course, there's nothing yet here in there. So at the moment, we only have data for these. There's nothing else. So this is just a generic from the generic program and construction set. And we have, yeah, we don't have anything else yet. So let's let's go with what we have. And now it has different outputs. Here again is a, a report. We have the a balance output we have the balance storage output the normal balance and normal balance storage now we would need to know what that means and you can always read of course what that output means so let's maybe we start with the balance a list of data collections where each collection represent a load balance term this can then be plugged into the ladybug hourly plot or ladybug monthly chart to give a visualization of the load balance over all connected rooms okay so let's do that let's let's do this first we have the uh, ladybug uh, monthly chart let's use the monthly chart 
that was similar what they used in the uh, example file and yeah why not why not and assume the data will go here oh no probably not that looks interesting that looks interesting Yes, I think this was the one. Because this is a monthly chart, so we need to... Yes, that's that's correct. So we need, we, we need to set the time interval on how we want to look at the data. So we don't want to look uh, daily, we want to look monthly. And that gives us, or gives us a very nice chart for each month on these items. Cooling, lighting, ele electric equipment and heating. This assumed, this is what's assumed from the current uh, generic data what's in here as the generic construction set program and so on pretty interesting and we can set a base point let's do that so it's not directly overlapping with our model maybe let's put it here okay cool so this that looks so very, very promising already. Well, we also want to actually look at um, the data on the model itself. So that would be also interesting. Uh, let's see if we can achieve that. There's this tool here. So I think, can I use this or that? This I think it doesn't matter. Well, we will look at the faces another time. Wait, let, let's keep it a bit more simple. Um, the faces is a bit more complicated. Let's do this. Oh no, that was wrong. Connect model is okay. Yeah, that works. Why does that work? Okay, it seems like we can only look at one item at a at a time, which is also fine. We can. We will play with that. At least we have some output. I want. I maybe want to scale that here a bit. It feels like it's super big. Okay, I think this is uh, I think it's a good start. This is a base we can work with, where we can also see something. Where otherwise it's a bit boring. Here we can uh, look at, for example, cooling and heating separately. For sure, there's a way to combine these, but let's keep it simple and um, let's let's basically start from here. Okay, if you want to get more more inspiration uh, on how that works and a more detailed version of this, you can already look into the example files in your download folder where you downloaded uh, the Honeybee or the Ladybug tools. There are example files and I also took some inspiration on how to put this together. And there's, a, there's one which is much more detailed. In the next video, we're gonna start with basic properties, construction sets, schedules, loads. Well, in the next video, we start with the basic properties, yeah. and and then we see how that will ch how the how this uh, whole energy balance will change. So that's that's what we try to do next. Yeah, I hope this uh, opens new doors. This is very exciting. I looked a bit, uh, a bit, had a bit more preview already in all these different things. Um, and yeah, it's not that, it's not that difficult if you look at it systematically. So we will get there, we will get there. It's, it's getting very interesting. Um, next time we also look at how can we increase the different uh, data streams. We want to get more out of it, not just the cooling, heating, and so on. So we, we solar gain is very interesting and, and important. That's what I want to look at. Also, hopefully, in the next video. So we 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 add these different data streams to the model and uh, be able to see more data. So that's that would be that would be perfect. 
All right, so see you next time.